Welcome back. Now we are going to discuss what are some essential elements we will keep in our mind if we want to wear that hat of a awesome, awesome public speaker. We saw in the previous section, a previous lesson that if we have to influence people, we will have to do certain things. Apart from that, if you want to, again, influence, inspire and give it a complete shape, there are certain things you have to keep in mind. It's just kind of, I will not take much time in explaining them, but it's going to help you in with your future endeavors in speaking. Okay, so just a one slide, do not worry. There's not much, but it's very important that you keep these things in your mind. What are the elements of successful public speaking? Okay, so essential elements in successful public speaking. All right, so this is what we are going to discuss today. Now, when we are talking only about the mindset wherein you think that I can become a confident speaker. So you start with I can and then you end up saying I am. All right, so the journey from I can to I am, how do you do it? So in the previous lesson we saw that how do we influence and previous to that we also saw what are the essential things that we need, okay, how to open, how to close, how to bring in that boldness in our voice, the loudness, the pitch, the pauses, the pace, tempo, stories, we saw everything. So all inclusive, how do we become speakers who the moment uh, go to the stage, there is a, a positive energy that they develop and you too can do that. There are some essential elements that you need to keep in mind and it's all about your mind here. You have taken care of the rest of the things. You have worked on your diction. You have prepared your speech. Let's start from the beginning. You have done a research. You have uh, noted down the topic, research topics, and then you choose one topic. Then you come at the main ideas of your uh, speech. Then you arrive at the sub ideas or the surrounding ideas behind your speech. You think of the core message. Then you decide and write the speech. Once you've done that, now you, you start thinking about your opening line, your closing line, how will, you, how will you talk, you practice, you do all of these things. But there shouldn't be an iota of doubt inside you that can I do it? It's for that reason, these are some of these points, just five points that I've mentioned here, which will tune your mind to think that yes, you are a confident public speaker. Now, what are these things? The necessity of persistence and it's very important and earlier also you must have heard me saying this persistence you have to be persistent in your efforts so starting from thinking of speaking okay on any platform in any event anything that you think that yes I am now ready to speak from that time till the time you are on the stage and after that as well you should not leave it half done Okay, so there should be a continuous push that you will do to yourself. That persistence should be there. You shouldn't do one thing and then you come back and say, no, no, I think it's not possible. I think I'll not have that time. The moment you start thinking, I think I can't, I will not have. So there's no word that we talk to ourselves in our mind, N-O, no. The moment we say no, all right, our mind, our mind is such a piece of... Um, organ that God has given us, it, it, we can control it. But the moment it starts controlling us, we are gone. So when we are sending these signals to the mind that uh, I have a doubt, I can't, no, it's not possible. So whenever you the, the mind hears this word no, it knows it's a negative thing. And associated with whatever you say no to, it will create a blockage. I can't do this. If you say that no, no, it's not possible. I am too engaged, I cannot do this uh, particular thing, I cannot finish this task. Your mind will tune it to such a level that you will not, be, even if you try, you will not be able to. So do not let your mind think that you can't. Whatever you let your mind think, it thinks. And then when you say no, 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 it starts controlling you. So never speak this word no to your mind, with yourself you should not be talking. That is why when you have this, when you erase this no negative thoughts from your mind, you can persistently pursue your dream of whatever you want. It's not only about talking or communicating with people. It's about everything. You, you, you now know that, okay, I can do this. So let me just take those small, small steps. Step by step, I will go. 
What is that persistence should be there. You cannot leave it half done. You cannot say, no, I cannot do it. It's not possible. I'm not getting the right words. I do not know who the audience is. I, nobody's giving, getting me an idea or giving me an idea of the audience. I do not know how the stage looks. So every time you have these thoughts, you, if you've taken one step ahead, you are gone 10 steps back. So that persistence should always be there. You should not leave it half done. And again, connecting to it, keeping everlastingly at it. Keep on doing it. One assignment of speech is over. Go ahead and prepare for the next assignment of speech. I mean, keep on participating in these kind of events. Not only events, any opportunity that you get to talk on anything, take that as an advantage and deliver your speech. Do not, okay, I have done it once, why should I do it again? You should not have that thought. So everlastingly, keep on doing it with persistence, keep on doing it, repeating it time and again, time and again, time and again. That is why we say practice makes a man perfect. And then you should have this thing in your mind, certainty of reward. So as I told you in my example there that we know what our reward is. So as a speaker, what is your reward? Just take some time and think that if we are speakers, one reward could be of course, so I told you that reward of getting incentives, bonuses, it's fine. So that reward could be I'm getting my medal or trophy or whatever it may be, first, second, third prize or participating um, participation certificate. What are the other motives, other rewards that you can associate your involvement with the speech with? That is your audience's claps, your audience's appreciation. They are appreciating you for whatever you have spoken. When the audience, won, when uh, the, after the speech, when people come and talk to you, wow, you delivered the speech so beautifully. Wow, your thoughts and ideas were so good. I never thought it that way. That is the reward that you should be looking at. And you should start visualizing these rewards, okay? Certainty of reward, I will get it. I will get my audience clap for me. I will, not, not only a false clap, but with enthusiasm. So that reward, you will get it. You have to visualize it. That yes, I am getting this reward of my audience clapping for me, of my audience jumping off the chair, of my audience coming and talking to me, trying to shake hands with me, because I have delivered such a powerful and beautiful speech. Climbing the Himalayas. Now you must be thinking that we are talking about speech. Where did Himalayas come into picture? The reason why I have used this thing called Himalayas is, you start here, okay, and you are somewhere here, all right. You start walk, climbing, 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 and then you realize, my God, it's a steep. I can never do it. When you are climbing a mountain, just try to find out how mountaineers do that. They feel breathless, they feel sick, they feel puking, they feel that life is going to end. Many come back. Many come back. They cannot finish this entire trail they, because they feel that they cannot do it. But then there are some who go and flung a flag there. So climb that mountain, climb the Himalayas. Himalayas because that is the mountain peak people want to climb. That's an aspiration many have. So when you've started, don't come back. You know you can climb it. Climb it and then come back. The achievement that you will get, it's literally not, so it's a metaphor that I'm using, literally not climbing the mountain and coming back, but taking that step and reaching to the top and then you're happy and then you've come back because that was your task of delivering the speech. So climb the Himalayas, do not leave it. And this is what you need to build in. And this can only happen if you talk to your mind. If you negate negative thoughts, I mean, if you erase negative thoughts, if you surround yourself with positive thoughts, if you meditate, if you think that, yes, I can do it. It's a, it's, we call it power of attraction. The more you attract, but attract as in you're attracting good things. You are, you are visualizing and attracting good things. Yes, I can do it. Just close your eyes and visualize and you will achieve it. I had told you earlier also. If you want to score good marks in one subject, close your eyes, visualize, act. You will be able to get it. So that will to win has to be there. That willingness to win, that willingness to perform. If it's not there, no matter whatever uh, you know pills or injections we give you, you will not be able to reach there, okay? So that willingness 
to win or that will to win has to be there inside you then only you can win and that is where your mind comes into picture it all can be done using your mind and that is why I said that I am trying to develop that mindset in you of a successful speaker so with these thoughts I'm going to end this lesson here and see that thought inside you that you can do it you can become an awesome awesome very very inspiring speaker in the next lessons, we are going to look forward and see what else can be done, okay, to improve, maybe increase our vocabulary, the do's and don'ts of public speaking, the, fears, uh, the phobias that we have, anything related to public speaking that we can look at so that we end this journey in a positive note. So I'll see you on the other side. Thanks for watching.